Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for giving up your uh, precious lunch for seeing me. Um, it's, uh, it's a good sign that people don't leave now. Um, so uh, welcome to um, our upgrade session for today. Uh, welcome to Amsterdam. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Skype for Business to Teams, um, a fabulous journey in which I hope I can give you some guidance and some help. Um, a little bit about me. I'm uh, Cornel Bullens. My name is going to be somewhere on the slides as well, I suppose. I'm a senior uh, program manager in the Skype, uh, no, in the Teams Engineering. I keep saying Skype for Business. Um, in a Teams Engineering uh, uh, group. And uh, my specialities are uh, mainly around telephony and networking, uh, which are essentially the two topics we won't be talking about today. We will be talking about our Skype for Business to Microsoft Teams journey. Uh, what we'll be talking about today, uh, our objectives is, um, I want to show you the different possibilities we have. I'll do a small demo in which I'll show you um, what the user experiences will be, what the admin possibilities are. Uh, for you to go in a smooth kind of way from Skype for Business to a full Teams deployment. We'll talk a little bit about side by side. We'll talk a little bit about um, pure Skype for Business and pure Teams. Um, I'll show you the admin experience and I'll show you the client experience. The, um, the main takeaways from this, is, uh, from this session will be um, what the user experience will be. So uh, for your end users, how will this look like, how will they be able to use our products while this migration phase is happening. We'll be uh, showing you a little bit about our um, migration and adoption tools that we have for you. Um, you can download them, I'll give you all the links, you should be able to download the deck as well, and you get all the aka.ms links to get adoption materials, to get uh, training materials for both admin and end users, uh, to get all this migration material. Uh, we'll do some, some questions as well um, at the end of the, uh, the session. Uh, we don't have any microphones, so you have to come up and I'll repeat the question, and it's going to be interesting. Uh, before we get started, uh, I, I have a few defects as a speaker. I know I'm a little, little bit of a quick talker, and sometimes I invent some English words. If I uh, say stuff that you don't understand, it's probably me, and uh, I... I I can talk a little bit too quick. So my apologies for that. I know I do that, and I tend to walk around a little bit, and I'm very easily distracted. So I'll try to stay on track, and I'll try to go through this complete session and uh, try to make it a little bit fun as well. So for that, um, we'll, we'll do a little bit of marketing first. So what we as Microsoft really want to is to get everybody on Teams. That's our goal. Go away from Skype for Business, go away from, from those that still have OCS, I know they're still out there, and uh, to go onto Teams. And why do we want this? Well, when we started, um, I, I remember Enterprise Connect two years ago where we said, hey, we have this new cool thing, it's called Teams. And we started off here, right? We started off with, it's Teams, it's collaboration, uh, you can do IM too. And people were a little bit confused in the beginning. Because, well, we have Skype for Business and we have different tools, so wh why do we need this? And we said, well, this is our future of communication. We feel the future of communication, the future of collaboration is in Teams. So we're two years in the journey. Enterprise Connect was happening, is actually happening this week. Uh, we're two years into the journey. And in those two years, we've, we've gone from this, this weird little app built on Office 365 groups that had some contacts and had some, some way of chatting in it to a full-fledged communication suite where we have we've calling, we've got um, video chat, we have compliance, we fully uh, work, uh, we're fully compliant with GDPR. Um, we have um, even some of the AI possibilities built in where we do live uh, transcription and live translation that's coming soon. We're on loads and loads of devices. We're essentially doing everything we did. Uh, if we look at our Skype for Business to Teams journey, we're doing everything Skype for Business did and better. Um, the experience on all the mobile devices is much, much better in Teams than it is in Skype for Business. The fact that um, 
I can install Teams on my mobile phone, and after two hours, my phone still works and isn't uh, completely drained out of battery life is, is for me, <laughs> makes me very happy. Um, all those things that we've, we've worked on and that we've added to Teams makes this a full, um, full-fledged communication product. So when we talk about this migration journey and, and when, whenever the customers ask me, when should we start this journey? The answer is, well, yesterday. We, we have this complete suite, we have this complete feature set, you can go to Teams and your users will be happier. So looking at that, um, some numbers, I already talked about that this morning. Um, 329,000 companies using Microsoft Teams and actually using it, so not just, oh, it's on, no, they're actually using it. 87 of Fortune 100 and we have 60 customers that have over 10,000 users which is quite a bit. Um, and we only measure active usage. So those are people actively collaborating on Teams, using it as the primary collaboration platform. And just two years. So how do we get you guys on Teams? How can we help there? Let's talk a little bit about that. So um, we've talked a little bit about the why already. Um, <laughs> The why, there's a, there's a fourth reason why we've been very upfront, and I, I like to start with that reason, actually. Uh, the, the main reason why you're going to Teams is Skype for Business is going away. I mean, that's one of the main reasons to go, right? Um, we've, we've said this two years ago, we've said this last year, we keep saying it, that as long as you need it, we'll support Skype for Business. As long as you have a compelling business reason, will help you stay on Skype for Business. If you want to deploy this on-prem, go ahead and run Skype for Business. But it's not where Microsoft's going, and it's not where you should be going. Um, if you look at the three um, more marketing reasons to go to Teams, um, but there are also the reasons where um, I, I know that I was convinced. I mean, uh, for those that have been to my sessions before, I was there with... Uh, uh, Windows Messenger, I was there with LCS and OCS and uh, Skype for Business and I've had the entire journey and with great pain in my heart, uh, a year ago I deleted Skype for Business for my PC and I started using Teams. And every single time I start Skype for Business um, at, at this, on my PC for whatever reason, I'm like, oh, I, I don't really want to do that. I wish I could use Teams. Um, Looking at the, the performance, the possibilities this gives me and the ease of use, we're really looking into, um, we're really happy with those advanced features and capabilities. With that progress we've made from Skype for Business, with the step we've taken. Um, every time, and this is the beauty of a cloud managed service, every time you complain about Teams, and trust me, people complain about Teams, um, Every time you complain and you file a bug report or you file a report and say, hey, this is broken, this is slow, this is not great, we fix it. And we push out about two new releases each month and we fix just simple stuff. Stuff like the, the speed at which team starts, the, um, the ease of use. Oh, we need feature X, Y, or Z. We can easily add that to the product, push the update out, and everybody now has it. It just works. Um, so, loads of features, loads of great reasons to go to Teams. Um, this is what Teams can do. <laughs> we, we can talk about this uh, all day. Uh, boring slide. Um, it's in the deck. You can look at it. Um, this is all the stuff we've been working on for the past two years. All the stuff that we felt this needs to be in the product to ensure that we can replace Skype for Business. Things like um, uh, TTY support, but also uh, getting all the existing SIP phones, see how far we can get them into the product, uh, but all things like, also things like group call pickup, uh, advanced calling features, uh, some of the advanced networking features, QoS support, all those kinds of things. But also all things that we couldn't do with, with Skype for Business. With Skype for Business for us, um, and, and this is a personal pain point, Skype for Business for us, and to do QoS on a Mac computer was hell. That was absolutely horrible to do. And with Teams, we can do it. 
Uh, same for mobile phones. We can do QoS on mobile phones, on Wi-Fi, which we couldn't do with Skype for Business. We were just stuck. Uh, so it's giving us a lot of extra flexibility, and we can actually deliver on all the features that we did for Skype for Business and more. Um, so, so, so this was the, like the, the marketing stuff, and now we'll do the technical stuff. Um, I like technical stuff better. So on the left is where most of the customers will be, right? So you have Skype for Business, uh, you have an existing deployment, people are, are semi-happy, they're enjoying it, or they might not, but it, at least it works. Um, so how do we get to Teams? And we have a strategy that, um, that we recommend using, and that we have all the training materials and all the help for you guys, which is you start off with Skype for Business. We help you um, uh, envision how to use Teams in your organization. Once you have this envisioning plan, you start piloting Teams for a certain select group of users. See what they like, what they don't. Uh, how do you want to use Teams within your organization? Do you want to create groups or not? Do you want to pre-deploy any Teams for your organization? At that point, you start deploying Teams. And the experience your users will get is that they'll both be using Teams as well as Skype for Business. And they can pick their preferred client. So they can use, let's say they're in a group collaboration and now they decide, let's use Teams together. They want to do one-on-one -on -one chat and they say, oh, I like Skype for Business better. They can use Skype for Business for that. Um, at that point, you start working on adoption. Promote Teams. Why is Teams better? Why do more people, uh, why should more people be using Teams? And you start pushing out these teams. You use Teams champions. We've got a lot of uh, material there to educate those team, Teams champions. At a certain point, you start um, voluntelling people that they're now using Teams more than Skype for Business, where there are some uh, features that I'll show you that, that can help you push people more towards Teams. So we can, uh, for example, force uh, Teams just for meetings. So now every meeting that people were planning, they'll be using Teams. Uh, at a certain point, there's a... Uh, there's this snowball effect where more people are using Teams than Skype for Business. Everybody's familiar with the app and everybody's using Teams. At that point, we'll, we'll switch off Skype for Business. People will get an experience of, in Skype for Business, and I'll show, show you guys all of this, um, they'll get the experience of, okay, uh, Skype for Business starts, they get a message, hey, you've been, you've been upgraded, you should be using Teams now with a nice link, and they'll get pushed to Teams. Skype for Business is still there. If they want to use existing Skype meetings, that all still works. But any new meeting, any new chat, all those kinds of things, presence, everything is now arranged by Microsoft Teams. So what are those upgrade experiences? So let's start off with Islands Mode. So what's Island Mode? Island Mode is our recommended way of upgrading. With Island Mode, everybody gets Teams. And on the left, you can see that it's... it's the full feature, so you get chat, you get your contact list, you get calling if you want to. Oh, you see, wrong button. Um, in Skype for Business, you get uh, still a full-fledged client, so your meetings are there, your contact list is there, your dial pad is there, and you can, you can, uh, you can choose, right? I can click in Skype for Business to call someone, and the other person's Skype for Business will ring. Uh, I can click in Teams to call someone, and the other person's Teams will ring. It's an island mode, those are two separate identities. There are some drawbacks. So if I'm in a call in Teams, Skype for Business will show me as available. If I start a chat in Skype for Business, but the other person has said, screw it, I'm not using Skype for Business anymore, he will never see that chat. There's no interop, it's two separate systems. Um, for meetings, people can select which meeting they want, either a Teams meeting or a Skype for Business meeting. They, this is a, a, a nice way to test both clients, to see what you like, to test drive them, to do some um, piloting, um, to start with a small scale adoption. Um, and this is really something to entice people, hey, you should, we're not forcing you, there's a nice carrot, it's called Teams, Start playing with it. Start to see how much you like it. From here, we have at the full end of the migration, we have a Teams only mode. So once you go into Teams only mode, you can see Teams is full fledged. So we have chat, we've got our meetings, we've got our calls. Um, 
If people from Skype for Business, an external organization, send you a message, it lands in Teams. If they do an audio or video call, your Teams client will ring. So for the other organizations, which, which you have a federation or something, they won't notice anything. They might see a small um, bar, just like you would see in Teams, saying, hey, they're using Skype for Business. They might not get all the Teams features that you have. But still, your phone will ring, video will work, your chat will work, and your presence will work. Uh, meetings will be completely in Teams. The schedule new Skype meetings button will disappear. And if you have existing scheduled Skype for Business meetings, the Skype for Business client will launch with either the web app, with the, the meetings app, or with the, the Skype for Business client, so you can still join those Skype for Business meetings. We won't be blocking them. By the way, the same goes for the meeting devices. So should you have any meeting devices and you upgrade them to full Teams, as soon as there are people still scheduling Skype for Business meetings, they will still be able to join them. So it's a, we, and this is the beauty of Teams, we can go to all of our devices, our phones, to everything that's running Teams, we'll ensure that this works through this whole interop phase. Data that gets migrated, well, everything. Um, your contacts, your meetings, everything just goes into Teams. And for your end users, it's more of an experience of, okay, I've been warned about Teams. I've, I've started to like it. Oh, I, I, I can't use Skype for Business. That's fine. I was using Teams anyway. Um, so what happens to the Skype for Business users? This is what they'll see. And we've, we've changed the graphic a little bit. Um, uh, I'll show you that in the demo as well. Um, it, at that point, you go into a meeting-only configuration, which means that the client's still there, and you can still use it, but just to join the meetings. You can't schedule new meetings, you can't initiate chats, anything, and all it says is, hey, you're, you're using the wrong app, right? You should be using something else. What a nice link to go there. Um, <clears throat> that being said, so this is if you have existing uh, meetings planned, this is what it'll show. You can see that we've also removed the buttons so you won't be able to initiate any new chat just like we do in Teams. Um, so how do we say you should be upgrading? Well, we've talked a little bit about this guidance. So um, ideally, we really want you to be on Skype for Business Online. Um, that's, that's not really reality, we know that. Um, so first step of that migration for every organization is go to Skype for Business Online. That's really one of those things that we, that we really encourage our customers to do. Go try Skype for Business Online. Um, moving, if your users are in Skype for Business Online and you move from Skype for Business Online to Teams, that's really a flawless experience. Um, we are building more and more tools for you to go um, directly from an on-prem deployment to Skype to Teams. Um, in the back end, it would still be something uh, along the lines of on-prem user goes to Skype for Business Online, goes to Team. Well, we'll just get better at hiding that. I suppose that's the <laughs> summary of it. Um, so you have this Skype for Business Online deployment. From this Skype for Business Online deployment, you go into the island mode, as we talked about. So now people can do meetings and people can do um, calling and IM from both clients, but they'll get to experience the additional functionality of Teams, such as the Teams, such as the add-ins that I had talked about. And at a certain point, you get, to, you get to the phase where people say, hey, I like Teams, I go into Teams. So that was our migration approach. Um, from Skype for Business Online, um, uh, to a side-by-side uh, -side to a uh, full Teams deployment once we're done. Uh, however, we know that not all organizations will be full on Skype for Business. So one of the things that we're introducing, um, uh, we, talked, we talked a little bit about this, and it's now finally coming, um, and, and you should think about... Uh, yeah. I don't know if I, I'll just say it. Uh, think more along the lines of weeks than, uh, than along the lines of years that we'll be doing this. Um, we'll be doing something called meeting first. Um, what you can do with this is that uh, the option to schedule meetings from Skype for Business will go away. And even if you're on-prem, as soon as you click new meeting, it'll be a Teams meeting. So you'll still be using your 
client to do calling, to do instant messaging, to do things like that, but every meeting will now be a Teams meeting. That will be our recommended approach when it comes to larger enterprises that have a large on-prem deployment. Move meetings to the cloud first, then join those meetings with your client uh, migration as well. So you keep running Skype for Business Server for chat and calling, you meet in Teams, and you drive adoption through that. Um, because at that point, you will get the richest meeting experience. Uh, and uh, in Teams, we also have this full cloud video interop. We have uh, the new meeting devices. Uh, I had talked a little bit about that this morning. We now have six vendors that built them. Um, they won't be building them for Skype for Business anymore. Any new device that you see announced will be for Teams. From there, um, uh, both clients will coexist, and you can drive adoption from there. Uh, <clears throat> that being said, um, so how does this look like for more complex organizations that have a larger on-prem deployment? So you have Skype for Business on-prem, which you see only. From there, you do a meetings first scenario where you do um, uh, just Teams for your team chat, but they can't do calling, they can't do video, they can't do anything. You start adding meetings, and the meetings go away from Skype for Business, they go into Teams. And at that point, people have experienced Teams with not just um, their chat, but now they also have done audio and video in the Teams client. Um, one of the things we've also seen is that, in general, um, the quality of the Teams meetings is higher than the Skype for Business meetings. And this is, um, a lot of people have said, oh, it's because you use different codecs and different weird networking stuff in Teams. N no, it's not. <laughs> the reason is very simple, is that with Teams, we can update anything we need. We're, we're, we are sure that the clients are running the latest stack, they're running the latest media stack in the background. They're not doing funny stuff with that. We get better reports. And what we've seen is that loads and loads of on-prem deployments and, and centrally managed deployments could be up to two years behind with updates and running old media stacks, and we just couldn't push any of our updates that were performance improving. Uh, so the, you, you'll see a large quality boost with this move to Teams for just meetings. At this certain point, you get uh, people that are more happy with their meeting experience. They get a higher quality audio and video and a higher quality meeting in that, uh, uh, higher quality experience in that meeting. And what we've seen is that most customers will then get questions like, oh, hey, this, this is pretty cool. Can we do one-on-one -on -one calls with this as well? Sure you can. There we go. Now we can do one-on-one -on -one calls with Teams as well. So uh, this is our strategy for larger organizations where we say, hey, if you want to, you can just move teams, uh, meetings to Teams. Use Teams as your meeting solution before you go full on Teams. Um, so uh, the, we'll, we'll, a nice graph with round things, I suppose. Um, start with Teams uh, without UC, uh, together with Skype for Business, move to meetings first. Uh, at that point, you have a mixed environment, and at that point, you move to Teams as well. So, endpoint Teams. Let's show you um, all the talking. So, what I want to show you is let's start off with the modern portal of Teams. There we go. So, uh, this is our Teams modern portal. Um, this is where you do your administration and your your, your settings for Teams. And uh, when it comes to upgrades, so you can see I have a very diverse user population with a lot of corneals. So um, I have made four users. This is my, my admin, you can ignore that. Um, I've got four users. I've got uh, Corneal, I've got Corneal um, Skype for Business, Corneal Teams, and Corneal Islands. And those names are pretty descriptive, <laughs> so um, I hope I don't have to explain what they do. Uh, but I'll show you the different experiences um, uh, and the possibilities we give you with that. So there's this nice little um, button that says uh, Teams Upgrade. And from Teams Upgrade, you can control your complete Teams Upgrade. So um, at this point, I've set my organization to islands. 
So we've talked a little bit about islands. My entire organization is now capable of using both Skype for Business as well as Teams with full functionality. I can change that. I can say I want Skype for Business only. As soon as you go into Skype for Business only, you can still use Teams. However, it'll just be the Teams feature. So no direct messaging, um, no meetings, uh, no calling. Uh, it also controls routing. Why is this important? It's if a federated partner sends you a message with Skype for Business only, you're forcing all those messages to only go to Skype for Business. That might be certain organizations that require this, um, perhaps for an adoption period because you just want to trial it and you want to prevent people from using Teams. That's fine, we give you the option. The same goes for Teams. As soon as I go into Teams only, all my incoming messages now go to Teams and my Skype for Business client will be able uh, will tell you um, you're on Teams now, so go away. As soon as you go for uh, the islands or the Skype for Business mode, you get the option to notify your end users that Teams is coming. So your end users will know, hey, Teams is coming soon. Um, I might want to learn more about that. One of the other things that I can control here is what app should we be using to join those meetings? Do I still want to allow people to use their Skype for Business clients? Or do I, want to allow them, do I only want to allow them to use the Skype Meetings app? Uh, this might be uh, interesting if you're currently on-prem, you go with the Meetings First scenario where you want to phase out the Skype for Business application. You just want to go with the Skype Meetings app. And you can also enable the download of the Teams app in the background, which um, uses Skype for Business to download the Teams app. So as soon as people want to start using Teams, when they click it, instead of getting, having to wait for download for a central repository and, and being delayed with that, they get a fast, um, very reactive uh, um, response from the software where it immediately starts uh, and sets up Teams for them. So I'm going to discard this because uh, I'm not using organizational uh, settings. One of the nice things I can do is I can actually go into my users and change settings. So for my Skype for Business user, uh, this is a very old school reluctant user. And what I said is, hey, you'll only be using Skype for Business, so no Teams for you. Uh, but I want to give you the warning. I'm going to tell you Teams is coming. What I've done for my uh, um, uh, more uh, exploratory colleague, I've enabled islands. So in this case, I said use org-wide settings. So my organization is configured to use islands. Um, and they also, they're also configured to get that notification that Teams is coming. Um, so this one just complies with organizational policy. I also have one end state, which is uh, my Teams colleague, which is just using Teams only. You can show a notification because, well, there's no Skype for Business anymore. So no notification that Teams is coming because it's already there. And then my current user is, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. See, Zoom, Zoom is cool. Back to 100. Oh, almost flawless demo, almost. Um, my final user is Skype for Business only with no upgrade notification. Um, some, some companies might want to delay their Teams deployment, might want to be in a position where they don't want to talk about Teams. Um, so it probably won't work for long, but if that's your current strategy, don't talk about it so it doesn't exist. I, that's fine, you can do that. So my current logged in user is one of those users that's um, uh, only using Skype for Business. So if I go into Outlook, and I schedule a new meeting, you can see I can only schedule a new Skype meeting. We don't talk about Teams, right? Um, in Skype for Business, all is well. I have my, my users and I can find my other users and uh, they're online or they're somewhere else and this all works. All my incoming calls, incoming messages will go to Skype for Business and I'm none the wiser about Teams. I can go to Teams, I can install it, but all it will show me is, yeah, sorry. Um, uh, it'll, oh, we got an update. Um, all it'll show you is um, you can chat with a team and, and, and that's about it, right? So I can do a team, uh, sure, I can show a calendar, but there's nothing I can do. I could potentially join a meeting, 
but there's, there's no calling, no I am, nothing. It's really, I'm, I'm forced to go to my Skype for Business clients. So let's take a look at our clients that are using um, Skype for Business with an upgrade notification. Uh, by the way, if you start playing with this yourself, uh, the reason I'm switching user accounts is, if, is actually very simple. I really would have loved to show you what happens if you change those policy. Um, the reason I'm doing the, the switching between user accounts is that one of the policy changes can take up to four hours to apply. So uh, we can spend a fun 24 hours here seeing if policy is applied or I can switch user accounts. Um, I chose the latter. Um, so one of the things that it does now is that I've set this to, once again, just Skype for Business, but I've enabled the upgrade notification. So now my users actually get a purple bar in Teams colors in their Skype for Business clients, and they get told, hey, we've got, Skype, we've got Teams coming. Do you want to stop playing with this? Sure, I'll, I, I'm going to give it a try. Um, it starts Team, downloads in the background. I get the same functionality as before, because I'm just using Skype for Business, but at least um, I'm, get, uh, I'm getting triggered to go there, right? And I still have full controls in admin. I can ensure that don't start IMing or calling people from this, um, but I know they can start trying it. Then I've got my, the next step in our deployment. Now I know that, okay, so I've told them about Teams. They've played around a little bit in it. They've made some Teams. Let's talk about islands. So now we're in islands mode. We've enabled, um, this is the org wide setting, which is the default setting. So we can use uh, both clients. We can use Teams and we can use Skype for Business. So the first change that people will see is when they're in Skype for Business, um, they will still see, hey, Skype for Business will be upgraded to Microsoft Teams. You can try it. Oh, okay, cool. So let's, let's press the button again. But now I get a different Teams client. So now my Teams client also has chat, and I've got calls. And I can start playing around with it. I can start messaging other people. Uh, in island mode, when it comes to routing of messages, uh, any Skype for Business message will be sent to Skype for Business. Any Teams message will be sent to Teams. There's no interop. There's still um, separate deployments. But people can start playing around with this. They can start seeing how much they like it. One of the th changes that you also see is that in Outlook, you can now start scheduling Teams meetings. People can start really taking full advantage of the product. Anything that was working in Skype for Business will also work in Teams. Uh, if you had a, a calling plan, you can now also start making phone calls from Teams. Um, there's a routing option, however, where you can say uh, which client should ring first, and the client can decide that. Um, so when an incoming call comes, uh, it, it's either going to be Skype for Business or Teams, whatever you decide. Um, but at least you can use both clients to start making calls and start testing that. And then once this is done, we, uh, people are happy and we've gone to adoption and people are super happy with Teams, of course, uh, we can go to our final uh, state of our deployment where we go for full on Teams. Show you that. So now we're in, in full on Teams. And with full on Teams, now Skype for Business is saying, hey, your organization is now using Teams. You've been upgraded. And if you click here, you, you should be able to start using Teams. We'll also disable the auto start of Skype for Business. So when you log into Windows, Skype for Business won't start anymore. And if people are uh, stubborn and they still go to Skype for Business, this is what they'll see. Uh, if they have existing meetings, we can still show them in the app, in the calendar portion. We can get a meetings version of the app, and the app will still be installed so that if there is existing Skype for Business meetings, people can still join them. But we've convinced them they go to Teams now, so they click Go to Teams, and now Teams is their primary client. So Teams has um, the full on functionality that we've had before. So they do calling, they do chat, they do everything directly from Teams. And if they want to schedule a new meeting and they go to Outlook, you will see that in Outlook, in my calendar, I will only have Teams. So my ability to um, schedule new meetings from, from Outlook with Skype for Business has been taken away. 
any existing contact list that I had, anything that was still there, it's all been transferred to Teams. So my contact list, all that kind of stuff, uh, is now fully in Microsoft Teams. So that is for a semi-functional demo. Fantastic. Um, is there anything else for this that, since we have the demo open and things seem to be working for us today, so if there's anything that you want to see for, for the upgrade thing or for a question about this that I can show you, now's the time to speak up or forever hold your silence. Here we go. No questions. Yeah, fair enough. Um, there we go. So let's go back to my presentation. So upgrade worked. So I hope that this was clear about the stages that we had, like Skype for Business Only, uh, warning about the upgrade, islands, full on teams. So let's talk a, bit, a little bit about upgrade support. So how can Microsoft help you guys uh, to upgrade to Teams? How well, we have a lot of stuff that we can do. So we have those best practices. Uh, they're available in many different formats. So you can actually download a, um, an adoption and training kit. Uh, we have Fast Track that can help you. And we'll talk about all those little subjects. But I think the, the first thing, and that, that's what we've seen most in companies, is that um, when it comes to a, a change like Skype for Business to Teams, um, I, I think our main learning is that everybody likes change as long as everything stays the same. All right, that's the bit, everybody, oh, we're gonna get a new app. Will it look different? Yes, oh, I don't like that. Um, but it'll be faster and it'll be better and yeah, yeah, but it'll look different, right? Yes, no, I don't like it. Um, We've seen that. So one of the things we've really invested in, and I have a session tomorrow on that as well, is our adoption guidance that we have. And we have a lot of tooling about that, and we take it super seriously. Uh, we take it so serious, we actually have a new exam, and we have a full training and a certification uh, that's, based, uh, that's built completely on adoption and change management. Um, going from Skype for Business to Teams is more than... Um, going to islands, going to full-on teams and be done with it. It is a uh, user behavioral change. And in the end, uh, you, you will see uh, a positive pickup in every organization. It, it's what we've seen so far. Um, the, we have a, a specialized team in Microsoft, uh, CLS. Um, which is completely focused on this migration path from to, to help customers, uh, our larger and more difficult enterprise customers, to go from Skype for Business to Teams. And we haven't had a single company where we help them with the migration where they said, this is all fun and all, let's go back to Skype for Business. We've had a successful deployment in every single company. And the majority of time where, that we spent was usually not solving technical issues. They weren't that exciting. It was really managing that change management and helping companies with um, how to position this to their customer, how to help their, their end user, their, their own customers to adopt to Teams. So uh, we help you with that. We help you understand the impact of change. We help you with uh, guidance on this. We um, we give you a lot of material on how to do pilots using modes like island mode to get a, a set of super users uh, or power users to start using these teams, to collaborate with that. Uh, you see a little bit uh, of this, um, uh, say this, this, this effect of, oh, that's pretty cool that what you're doing, can I have it too? Um, we've seen that quite a bit. Um, we'll help you with doing that. And at that point, uh, there are simple, well, basic adoption strategies where you need that executive sponsor, where you need to have uh, frequent contact with your power users to ensure that they're still happy, that they know what they're doing, uh, that they get the most out of the app. From there, uh, what, what some of the upgrade support we can give you? So first of all, we've got guidance, we've got training for both the end user as the, uh, um, as the IT admins, we have a roadmap where we are um, as clear as we can be on what's coming, what's here, what do you need to prepare for. 
Uh, and we have a lot of the technical documentation out there uh, to help you prepare for any of the other uh, things you need to do with Teams. Uh, you should be able to download the deck afterwards, so I've been told, but feel free to take pictures of the AKA links. Um, the planning and guidance that we have is, is essentially this, along those lines of what I've shown you today. So Skype for Business, Ions, Teams, and when it comes to complex organizations, it's Skype for Business, Meetings First, Islands, uh, Teams. Depending on the size of your organization and the complexity, we also have Fast Track that can help you uh, directly engage. Uh, we have an adoption toolkit that actually has great end user videos, has a lot of uh, ready to send out emails, has a lot of the um, uh, business documents, business cases, all the things you want, uh, you need to actually deploy Teams and to get Teams adopted. It's at aka.ms slash Teams Toolkit. So plan for a successful upgrade. Get stakeholders on board. And I know it's, it's less technical and, and we're usually focused on, oh, what, which button do I need to push on, on getting Teams deployed? Well, we've seen the buttons. Um, there are also buttons you need to push on, on people. In this case, it's get the project stakeholders, get a project defined. Don't just come in in the morning and say, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go Teams only today. Um, you need a project for this. We have some technical readiness and user readiness in the last slide. I've given you the links. Get people prepared for deploying Teams. Deploy, and we have the beautiful thing of operational excellence, where we have tools like advanced call analytics, uh, call quality dashboard. We have uh, usage reports for, for you, so you can actually see how much is being used, what are the common problems people are walking into. aka.ms slash Skype to Teams has a nice list of all these features. Some additional resources that we have for you. Um, those are not easy aka.ms links. Um, in the end, the, the message stays the same. Plan the journey, onboard your pilot groups, onboard your power users, drive the adoption, then fully upgrade to Teams. With that, um, I'm done. You can, I, I have nothing more to tell you about this. Um, I hope it was informative. I hope at least you've seen some of the stuff you can do for the upgrade, giving you some resources. Uh, feel free to yell questions or come up front and, oh, we have a question. Yeah. Um, what about the, the SharePoint part? Because you're having a better every department has SharePoint uh, online site. So how do you okay, so that was not a fun question. Um, the, uh, uh, so what about SharePoint migration? Um, and and uh, what about SharePoint, the question, I'll repeat the question, the question is what about SharePoint migration for existing department SharePoint sites, how to migrate them into Teams? Um, I, I, this is gonna be a, a, kind of a boring answer. We know it's a problem. We, we know there are people working on it. And I don't have a solution on that apart from we have partners that have built third party tools to help you with that migration. Um, I have no, well, the answer I wanna give you is it's a great time to clean up your SharePoint sites. Um, it, it's not a good answer because it, for many companies that's not really an option and they need to be migrated. Um, I don't have an answer for that today, unfortunately. So one, I have a semi answer. So in Teams, you still have the option to directly link to those SharePoint sites and add them as a tab. I, I think our current guidance goes towards that direction to do that um, and keep using the SharePoint sites. Uh, I, I know we're looking into that and we know that's, a, uh, that's an interesting issue to look into. I'm sorry I don't have a better answer. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. So, so the question is, so this is, this is easy because we talked a lot about Skype Business Online to Teams. What about if you're on-prem and you're, you're un, unable to move to Skype Business Online? That's the question, I suppose. 
so you, that you cannot have it in online. Um, so, um, very broad statement. Um, every customer in the world should be able to have Skype for Business online. And I, I know people will come up to me and tell me, but I can't, I, I, I know. Um, we are committed to ensuring that every customer in the world can use Skype for Business online, and we'd love to learn about your, your, the, the why you as a customer cannot move to Skype for Business online, what's a blocker for you. Um, it, it, it will lead to the portion where, um, do, will, we do Skype, uh, will we do Teams on-prem? Uh, no. I mean, that, that's a very simple no. Um, if you want to migrate to Teams, Teams is an online offering. Um, if you're blocked, we'd love to learn why. We'd love to learn and see how, what we can do to, to, uh, to change this. Uh, I mean, we, we, could, we have uh, every sector, every customer, we've been able to get online and take away possible blockers. We have financial institutes, even in Switzerland, that are running uh, in Skype for Business Online. We have uh, the US Department of Defense that thought, hey, this is good enough for us. Um, we, and, and yes, we need to make changes to Skype for Business Online for unique customers, and we'll, we're committed to doing that. So come, please come up to me, love to learn why you, you can do it. Um, for those customers where we don't have a short-term solution uh, to move to online, we do have the option for you to deploy Skype for Business 2019. Uh, it's going to be supported for another 10 years. So uh, until 2029, you, you should be good with Skype for Business. Um, but we, what we will be focusing on is the path to online, and we will not be focusing on bringing cloud functionality to on-prem. I, I, I hope that sort of answers the question. Yeah, so people that can, so for the people that can't move to online, we invite them to, to move to Skype for Business on-prem 2019 as a temporary solution to move to online. But we're, I'm just going to be very clear about that. And in the meantime, love to learn about why you're blocked and happy to take away the blockers. There was another question, yes. Or how to deploy the, the, the Teams MSI. Um, I, I, I think we, we, we have different packaging solutions. I'm not a specialist on deployment of Teams, to be honest. Um, I can tell you. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know that by heart, to be honest. I don't know that by heart. I'd have to, uh, to look to my colleagues that do deployment stuff. Um, I know we're including it in the, the Office queue, so the, so the Office MSI. So when you deploy the Office MSI, Teams would be included. Um, and there's also an MSI available for you to push to clients directly. Um, and I know we give you some options with uh, like a background download through Skype for Business as well. Um, I, I know there's some guidance on that. I don't have the guidance by hand. Uh, send me an email and I can find it for you. By the way, for the people that want to, I'm just going to say it anyway, the people that want to bug me over email and, and send me either angry emails or happy emails, um, I like happy emails better, just to be clear on that. Um, you've, you've seen my name. There's one Cornel in Microsoft. So ask anyone that you know in Microsoft, hey, can you give me the email address for Cornel? And they, they have it. It's, it's my first name, dot last name at Microsoft.com. Um, so very easy, easily traceable. Any other questions? Yes. Are there any APIs available for the team, such as uh, if they had a Skype for Business integration, they can pay the full template? Yes, other APIs for Teams? Yes. And of course, it's not the same feature pair again. It used to be with the Skype for Business. No, it's, it's a thousand times better. It's, it's true. So, so there are two things with the APIs for Teams. Um, so, so a question about the Teams APIs. So don't think about Teams as you did with Skype for Business. It, the, the Teams client, think about that the Teams client sort of lives in the cloud too, right? Um, 
So you got to make a conscious decision when you want to use an API for Teams, whether you want to talk to, whether your goal is to talk to the Teams client because you want the Teams client to do stuff. Um, at, at that point, we would probably advise you to either make an, an add-in or a bot or something like that. Or if you want the Office service to do stuff, right? When you want to do things like a call center application. But with a call center application, I don't want the Teams client to do stuff. I want Office to do stuff for me. Uh, this is where the Graph API comes in. So, so yes, we offer this. Um, I don't know how far along we are. We have different, um, for, the, for those that, that, that saw this in the demo, I don't know. I'm just going to be a little bit cheeky here, and I'll show you my Teams client. Um, let's see. I'll go to activity, so I, I don't have too much stuff to. I'll, I'll, do, can do, I'll, I'll show you this. So do people know what this is? This R1, who knows what this means? Yeah, you guys know. So um, we have the concept of rings. And depending on um, your status as, this, this sounds wrong, but your status as a customer, uh, you can apply to be in a different ring uh, under certain circumstances. Um, and we deploy our features based on those rings, right? And um, you, you want to be on a high up number because that's when stuff doesn't break. And a low number, that's where stuff breaks. So I know with the Graph API and with the stuff that we're doing, um, I, I, I think we're even below ring zero right now. We're, we, we are trying out this stuff. And there's certain APIs that are available for ring one or ring two. Um, if you look for office ring, you can actually see in which ring you are. There's methods to find this out. And when you sign up for a, a beta of this, uh, it'll actually put you in a different ring and give you access to APIs and bots and new stuff for, for Teams. But we'll break stuff too. So, so don't just don't just wildly apply. Yeah, so the communication API is, is in public preview. You can sign up and then get in a different ring and get access to that. Yeah. Another question. Mm-hmm. So advice for on-prem Scott for business to teams. Um, I, well, so my approach is um, get some pizza, get a lot of coffee, spend a long weekend, burn it with fire, and get direct routing, and you're done. Uh, that, that's, that's the quickest. Um, realistically, um, island mode, set up teams, and you can start selecting, as you can saw in my demo, that you can do on a user basis. Uh, you can set people to Teams only, Scott for Business only. Uh, with direct routing, you can just set up direct routing. And you can pick the numbers you want to move over with direct routing, right? So I can pick up a set of pilot users, use direct routing to get those pilot users to, to start using Teams. Um, and still keep the, remain, the, the, the main uh, amount of numbers on-prem. Why do you need audit mode? Because the people that will be using Teams for their calling plan, when they start uh, messaging other people, they will be using Teams. So you, you got to think a little bit about that. But my advice would be just do it. Get direct routing, do two or three pilot numbers, start testing this, start seeing how you can do this. Um, we'll be launching Teams first. Very so, uh, sorry, meetings first very soon, so you can actually deploy teams to the entire organization and get them to start using meetings and get used to the client, and then slowly start introducing phone numbers to certain select uh, people. At a certain moment, you can say, hey, remember how this Skype for Business was, uh, client was ringing when, um, uh, uh, when, when people were, were calling you? Well, coming Monday, it's going to be the team's client. That there's, you need this transition period, and this is why we're pushing for these meetings first, where people can get used to Teams, and they can get used to audio and video in Teams. And, they, and it's also a bit about building trust, right? They need, to, they need to know that when they join a meeting using Teams, that the meeting starts, and that, that they can rely on that product. And as soon as they have the trust, you can start moving them over. But there's no reason why you wouldn't, why you wouldn't be able to run both Skype for Business on-prem, and direct routing in conjunction and start routing separate chunks of numbers over. But the pizza and coffee one is still a good viable alternative. Mm.
And the other ones, or else it's, it's you see? So you get, you, get, you get to go home five minutes. Oh, one, yeah. he's holding you back. Sorry about that. Yes, question. Ah, um, it took 55 minutes before we got to VDI. Um, is there a solution now? No. Uh, is this a very high priority for us? Yes. Um, I, I didn't like the way we did it in Skype for Business. Uh, we're going to do it better in Teams. And I, I think some very smart people have already figured out how. It's now a question of doing it. Um, but it it's definitely on the radar. It's not forgotten. People are working on that, and there's no solution today. Uh, and irregardless of what third parties tell you, if we can do it, there's no solution today. All right. No more questions? Great. Oh, what? Sorry, yeah, I can, very bright lights. I, I can't. There's, I'm sure there's someone there. Uh, ask your question. Uh, is there a possibility to, to follow? Oh, this is a very good question. Is there a, a possibility to set the, um, the upgrade mode for a complete AD group? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very lazy, so I always go to a GUI and click stuff. Um, you can also do this by PowerShell, of course. So uh, start Skype Business Online PowerShell, uh, connect to your tenants. Uh, if you do a, a get dash CS group or just a, a get AD group, uh, set a filter and then apply a PowerShell commandment, you can do this. So the PowerShell commandment would be something about set dash uh, uh, upgrade mode, and you could do SFB only, Teams only, or islands, and you can you can just use a filter in PowerShell to to apply this immediately to an entire uh, AD group. Does that answer the question? Fantastic. Yeah, I'm just lazy. I, 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 so the demo script said, you should open PowerShell and type this stuff in. I, okay, I, I, I can do that, but then you would see some typing, and that's, I thought it better to see the experience. Um, no more questions? Very good, then we're done. We're, we're two minutes, 30 seconds before schedule. There we go. You can get some lunch.